Hey everyone, welcome back to another slime fun filled episode with your host Boomer. I have some follow up information from our last episode and talking about the uh, hydrogen, the water generation, the hydro steam generation turbine. Uh, apparently, that is a design. In other words, it is intentional where when you place water below the turbine, that it turns it into steam and it disappears. So in order to effectively use that, you do have to create some sort of source block rebuilding underneath it, whether you do a three by one and place it in the middle or a two by two above any of them. So having said that, that pretty much makes, you know, that type of farm, I hate to say it, but really, I mean, it's almost useless. Um, it might be something that if you need a little bit of power to get started in the very beginning, it, it might work, but honestly i think there's so many better options than to try to do the wind or the uh the water turb steam turbines that it just doesn't make much sense to do it so uh, at this point we are not going to go back to it simply because there's no benefit whatsoever once you've crafted not the first solar generator but the oh which one was it here the very basic advanced solar generator. Um, I don't know why I couldn't think of the name of it. Where's the electricity? Yeah. Once you've created the advanced solar generator, which is not hard to do, uh, you're generating more power than either one of those. Actually, both of them put together. So it was a nice attempt. Uh, unfortunately, that part of that plugin we're not going to use, but we will still be looking uh, towards going into the uh, the eco power we are still going to look towards eventually making this radiant solar generator as one option uh, or uh, i do want to check out the lightning receptor to see what that can do but the lunar generator we're not going to build one just to create a lunar generator because like i said it takes an energizer and energizes much more productive so that would become kind of a waste um, the Radiant Solar Generator essentially runs three uh, energized solar generators. So honestly, I'm not even sure if it's worth trying to craft this because while it does run all day and all night, so does my advanced panel, my celestial panel. So, and that was kind of expensive too, but honestly, I, I just, I'm not seeing the benefit. So, uh, I do want to test the lighting receptor, but other than that, we're really not going to mess with too much of this because the wind turbines, you know, 46 joules, I, again, it, it, there's no benefit. Now, if I wanted to set up an eco-friendly system, then it would be. If I were to put up 300 of these things, you know, then it might be worth it. But each one is, is two carbonados right off the bat and two motors. So I get it from the eco-friendly side of things. It's a nice plugin. From the reality of needing power and expanding, it just can't keep up. So the lighting receptor we'll play with, but everything else we're going to pass on. But this is the episode I've been waiting for. I've been really wanting to start to get into light expansion. And after I did the dust fabricator, you know, the boxing ring one and the screenshot where I had the dust fabricator versus the dust extractor, I spent the next five hours in front of my skeleton grinder unlocking the light expansion items. And I got all but five done. This one, the food synthesizer, I wasn't too worried about because I have plenty of food. That one was kind of expensive at 45 levels. There's four other items I couldn't touch because each one is 150 levels. The mass fabricator, the recycler, the UU matter, and the scrap. 600 levels of XP. Now, so far, I have not found any way to create a ton of experience. The only other thing I see here is an experiment table. So I'm not seeing any machine capable of producing a lot of experience. And if you know one, put it in the in the uh, comments below. I know there's an experience collector, which I've set one of those up at my Wither Skeleton Grinder. 
and it gives you flasks of knowledge. And the nice thing about the Wither Skeleton Grinder is they're down to a one-hit kill. So it doesn't take as long to get that experience level. But I think there's a better option. What we're going to do is create a cactus experience farm to where we're going to set up probably about a dozen layers of 64 cactus on each layer. And we've already smelted a carbonado furnace. And we're going to build this thing. And because my base is in the spawn chunks, that farm will run 24-7, 365. All I've got to do is get a fuel source out to it and, to cl and really just throw the smelted cactus right into the trash. Hey, B's having some fun up there. Good for him. So I'm going to get started. I'll be back and then we'll show you that. And then we'll talk about the plans for light expansion. Well, now that we finally got our cactus farm, we have uh, built up to 16 layers. Let me give you a sneaky peek. I know initially in another episode, we showed it off at 12, but we needed to increase production. So now we're at 16 layers of 64 cactus a piece. And we've pulled out the XP. And again, all you got to do is turn the lever on. This block is connected to the hopper directly underneath this furnace. So that locks the furnace and I can just pull it out. Then unlock it to let the XP go back up. And now we're finally, after using my XP accidentally twice on other items, just looking at the guide, we're going to go into light expansion and we are going to unlock the first item in here. And that is going to be the scrap, I think. Do I want to do that one first? No, let's do to build it. Let's unlock the mass fabricator. 150 levels gone, just like that. Oof, needs a lot of power too. Oh, sweet. I did not know we would get the recycler at the same time. <gasps> oh, we got all of them for 150. Oh, that is so much better. I was scared to death. I was going to have to get 645 levels. Wow. Well, okay, good news, guys. You don't need 645 levels to unlock the recycler, the mass fabricator, scrap, and UU matter. It's only 150. Oh, that's so much better. Well, now we're still going to have a massive XP farm to uh, use to help unlock the guide. So, wow, let's get building. So after all that, and I appreciate you guys taking time to hang around. It's been a week and a half since the very first part of that was recorded. We have now gotten light expansion going. We have 11 different recyclers running right now taking excess items. And a cool thing about a recycler is it takes anything, right? Flint, cobblestone. I could put my, my cobalt sword in there and my silk touch diamond pick in there to recycle it. It takes, depending on the power level, here's the problem I've got, is these don't draw a ton of power. If I remember right, they're only about 200 joules each. Let's get back. I've been working on a couple other episodes since this whole thing started. Okay, let's get back into the light expansion. So the recycler is running around 166. It's the mass fabricator that pulls almost 28,000 joules. So quite often I'm finding other machines not running when this is going. Otherwise I come back in and sometimes it's going, sometimes it's not. It depends on how fast it catches up. But you can have anything come in here. The recycler will turn it literally, it'll look like another dead bush. It's called scrap. And then it comes into the mass fabricator. And it takes a lot of them. It, it's not, you know, a tiny quick little shot and boom, they're done. It takes quite a few. And as far as what do you get out of the mass fabricator? Well, um, let's go look at the recipes. So, you know, at first there were three things on this list that I thought I was going to want. And that was going to be coal, ink sacs, and there was one other, and I don't remember which one it was. But now, oh, maybe it was mycelium. Now that gear shift has changed. Right now I'm running it as coal. So to get coal, you take this recipe and you put it in the crafting chamber. So every time I get three of these, it gives me 20 coal. I have to burn through like a thousand gold dust to get 20 coal. 
Now, recycling has not always been a productive use of time and resources. Some things it's much better than others. It's better than nothing. Because it was pretty pricey to unlock all this, and it was pretty pricey to build all this. So if all I did is ran this through to get me 20 coal every time, I'm going to say from a cost-effective standpoint, the life of the machine would probably wear out first. However, there is one thing I do want. And that's a sticky resin. Because this can be turned into plastic sheets by going through the rubber factory. You heard me right. Plastic for androids. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to change the recipe over to resin. And then we'll set up the ability to automatically run it through so that it becomes everything that it needs to to make it to the plastic standpoint. So you can see what's happening here. Whenever that mass fabricator kicks in, the power shoots down horrendously quick. Whenever it's off, it shoots back up. And I've added two void panels since I started this. So they're each producing 5,000 joules compared to the 1,000 on a celestial that were outside. I now have the two void panels running alongside eight nuclear reactors and I want to say I have a roughly 20, 22 or 20, I forget, it's around 20 million joule capacity storage in all those capacitors. I got it up there. And then I turned the darn thing back on and within minutes I, I'm in this situation again. Clearly I cannot function like this. So I think what I'm going to do is shut off the mass fabricator for a while. Let those scraps save up, and then I'll run it for a bit. But that's only short term. As you guys know, we've talked about a whole lot of things. So each one of these recyclers doesn't draw an insane amount of power. They draw, like I said, you know, minimal. It's, it's this beast. And every time it fires one of these, or it's got one going, every second it draws 28,000 joules. We can't live like that. I would have to put four more void panels up there to have any prayer. At least three, probably four to be able to keep up with everything I've got running. So we've got a power shortage. We've got a severe power shortage. Uh, right now I'm working on the first thing we need is the void workbench. And I'm one void ingot short. Right now I'm like 60 void bits short. I've actually upgraded since you guys last saw, whoops, sorry. I now have six void harvesters running to try to get that speed going on a void bits a little bit faster because in looking into the future, I'm going to need thousands upon thousands of them. And I think that thousands of ingots, so it's millions of bits. What we're looking to get to, to get going here, Let's see, I need, no, these are just the pieces. Where's the machines? Here we go. No, that's, the, that's these are the tools. What happened to the machines? Advanced powered storage infinity recipes. Is that, oh, wait a minute, I think that might be on page two. Yeah. Uh, STB, clay tech. Okay, here we go, infinity. No, these are just, these are just the singularities. Why am I missing? Or did I just not see them? I don't see it. I'll tell you what. Let's let's do a search up. Infinity. And let's here we go. We got them. So the first thing I looked at was the infinity panel. Now don't let this fool you. This is not the recipe. But this one generates fifty thousand. So it's the equivalent of ten void panels. So let's pull up that actual recipe, right? Uh, can I get to the recipes from here? No, I got to go back to the guide. All right. So to get the void panel, look at this. In the infinity workbench, I need 12 void panels to make an infinity plus 14 infinity ingots plus, I'm sorry, this was the celestial panels. So this is still cheaper than making 12 
void panels or 10 void panels to equal the power that it puts out. Yeah, that'd be the same as 10 void panels. It's taking six. It takes uh, a celestial panel to make each one of these void panels. So, you know, from a cost standpoint, it's probably going to cost more to make one of these. Plus the infinity ingots. Now, luckily, all of these singularities I can probably put together very quickly. As a matter of fact, I, I probably will be doing that. The only one that's going to take a little bit of time, and I went into the nether in mind, or I'm sorry, not the nether, the end. I got myself 24 under essence. So that'll let me make you know, 24 magic singularities. So I can make up to 24 if I can get the void ingots. Yeah. Uh, fortune, the man of my, yeah. So this, <clears throat> this is going to be an expensive beast on a scale from, you know, to 10 to 100. Uh, this is definitely getting up there, probably in a 60 to 70 range. So 14 voiding gets two infinite machine cores. Look at this. <clears throat> 16 infinity ingots, eight machine plates, plus four more machine cores. Machine circuits are nothing. All right. Uh, going back to this panel, then the infinite machine circuit. Hello, 20 more infinity ingots. I can't even make this thing without going back into the end and mining the living tar to get those ender essence. 12 more void ingots. So times that by 81. It's almost a thousand bits. And then we need a few more machine circuits. So a thousand bits just to make that one. Uh, no infinity ingot there, or void ingot there, excuse me. No void ingots here, but we've got them in here. So there's 18 more times 81. <laughs> oh, um, we know that we can get extra void from the Ender Dragon data card, but I don't have any of that stuff put together. I still haven't even killed the dragon for the first time. Then I'm looking, well, okay, 50,000 is great, but we know we're going to need a bit more. Not the 3 million buffer. It's pretty good. Yeah, baby. This is the boomer size reactor. 40 million buffer and a 300,000 joule. You ready for this? <laughs> All right. So we've got ourselves 16 infinity ingots, two void, uh, 10 machine plates, Two machine cores, two machine circuits, and two nether star reactors. Just to make that. That's crazy. That is totally crazy. But you know what? It's actually cheaper. This is actually, for me, is going to be much cheaper than making this. You know why? Because nowhere in here, the sheer amount of grinding to make all the solar panels and the carbonados that I'm going to need to make this aren't in here. This is insanely cheaper to make the infinity reactor. Again, it's just 16 infinity ingots, 10 machine plates. Now I've got the reinforced, I've got 5,000 reinforced ingots lying around doing nothing. So then really, yeah, I got to make that. So there's another 16 for each one of those. So that's another 32 infinity ingots. Why does it keep backing all the way out? So 16, 32 plus another 16. So 48. So I need 96 ender essence. I have 24. Guess what I'm doing tonight? <laughs> uh, and then infinite machine circuit. This is where we get our butt kicked. There's 40 more infinity ingots, 24 more void. This is what's going to get us is that machine circuit. Here we have two of them as well. So from a, a cost standpoint, this really seems much cheaper. It, it really does. The other star reactors are nothing. I mean, really, it, this is. This cost me, this is like building a... a or grinder at this point for me because I have these lying around. I have this lying around. I don't have these. I can build them quickly, but 
Uh, so these become the challenge. So we need two things we're gonna have to start focusing on is the increased capacity of voids. We've got all the singularities that we could want. Remember, we've got, let's see, where am I here? We have singularities going in the nether right now. We've got quite a few. The only ones that we're really low on in the nether are iron and gold. We've got 34 gold, so we'll need a few more. And that's fine. Because over here, we added in nine more. We've got uh, aluminum, copper, gold, rugger gold, not slime fun gold, rugger gold, uh, iron, lead, magnesium, silver, tin, and uh, zinc. So those are constructing, and all these range uh, anywhere except for the gold, I think, from like 25 to 40. So we are well underway and be able to produce all that. So the first thing that comes, that's got to get done is the void workbench. So that's task one for me to get towards that spot. Task two is to increase void bit production. But we do have other things that we want to run. Uh, so again, guys, I thank you. We've got the UU in light expansion system going. Uh, we will convert that over to sticky resin. So we can start making plastic for androids because we are going to need androids. I've, I've just determined I can't live without an android for quartz. Given the amount of silicon that I've been going through, the reason it took this long to get the episode done is I had to make, I can't remember how many countless, I think it was somewhere in the neighborhood of 3,400 solar panels just to make those two void ingots, I mean void panels. So I'm kind of tired of quartz right now. <laughs> But anyways, we're going to wrap this up. We're going to piece all this together. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Thank you guys for participating and commenting. And again, I do appreciate you. And as always, when we play Minecraft, you've got to go boomer or you got to go home. We'll see you later. <laughs>